How's it going everybody, my name is Hyde and today I'm going to give you my 9 blender tips I wish someone told me when I first started. So here I've just set up a simple scene, 4 objects, right? Now the one that I want to go over, if you press N, it brings up this transform panel, grease pencil, all that, yada yada, jazz. When you size something up in object mode, it, get, it gets bigger, right? It does. But if you look here, the scale has increased and the dimensions have gone all wacky, right? 1 on 1, 2, 2, 2 size it up, you know, that's double that, but this is increased. You don't want that. You always want these numbers to be 1. So when you're sizing stuff up, generally it's best to do it within edit mode itself. So when you size this up, you'll notice these are all 1, that's gone up. The dimensions don't matter, that's just saying how big it actually is in space. But the scale is showing that this here is how big it actually is. So if you import this to a game, um, in, or different game engines I should say, sometimes if the scales are wonky, like you have this one at 1, and you have this one that's 0.5, they might get imported both at 1 and 1, and 1, 1, 1, and 1, which would actually make this the same size as that object, which might be something you don't want. Now if you do end up increasing the size, or decreasing the size here, a good way to change it is you just go into the object, apply the scale, and you also would usually want to apply the rotation. So that changes it all to one on one once again. That's the first tip I wish I knew. Now let's move on to the second one. The one issue I always had was getting my cursor exactly in the precise precise spots that I would want it to be in. Like say I want it right back in the center of the world. That's easy. All you gotta know is shift S. I wish somebody told me this. So you can bring the cursor back to the center. So now it's right in the center of this 3D world. It's beautiful. Or you can go here and you can go like uh, selection to cursor so it moves it to the center. And you do stuff like that. So then also if you're in here, I have a mirror modifier in this. If I wanted the cursor or the object's origin to be over here, I can do shift control alt C. I know that's a little bit of a tongue twister to remember, but you can change the origin to where the 3D cursor is. I have to do this outside of edit mode I should say. So like that. So now the origin's over here and you notice the mirror effect has moved it way over there. Cool, right? So that's the next tip I wish I knew. The third one is the one that bothered me, or I should say troubled me, for the longest amount of time possible. It was insane. If you look here, if I change this to solid, you'll see this shape, for some reason, is darker on the outsides, but bright on the insides. And you're probably wondering, why is that? And that's simply because the normals have been flipped. So if you go inside this cube, you'll notice they're darker there than they were outside it. Now, this might not seem like a big issue, especially in Blender. But if you were to run this in any game, any game whatsoever, even in, I believe it happens in the Blender game uh, engine itself, it won't work properly. You'll end up being able to see through it. It'll be an invisible object, but when you're inside it, you'll then see all the walls. So this can be, you know, a handy trick for, like, effects that you want to pull off in your games, but typically, like, you want this cube to be visible on the outsides. So to fix that, just go in edit mode and do Control n so if you notice here, it says make normals consistent, I can switch it to the inside, or I can leave it to the outside. So now, that's visible on the outsides, and the inside will be see-through. That's all objects are done, and you want it to be fixed like that. I was, oh, you don't even want to know the amount of troubles I had trying to learn that, like figuring out why some, and sometimes it doesn't have your whole shape, right? Sometimes you just have one vertice that's, like, in the shape that's off, and then it goes see-through in that one hole, and you just can't figure out what's going on. That's why. The next thing I want to go over is uh, appropriate lighting for a cycles render, um, or if you like the soft illumination that I get. It's pretty simple actually, just put a, a basic light in, rotate it however you want, as I've done, and then in the lighting panel itself, it's a sun, that's what I put in, uh, change the size to 0.3 and just give it a nice glow of a yellow. You can even increase this maybe to strength of 3, that's, it won't be that, that big of a difference. So now if you were to render the image. Yeah, 3 made it really strong, you can tell by the background. It's made everything nice and yellow. It's probably too strong, I would leave the strength at 1. If I render this again, you'll notice it's not going to be as yellow, it's now just the same background that it was before. But everything has like this nice little soft glow to it. And it really uh, accents all the different uh, bumps, I guess you could say, so it makes that nice low poly look that I really like. So that's another hint, so that'll get your renders looking beautiful. The next thing that I think you should make sure you always do, is when you're changing your views, use the number pad. 5 to switch from orthographic to perspective, 1 to go front, 3 to go side. 
Now, I never thought that, like, I know that 7 goes to operate and 9 does nothing, but I always wondered, how do I get to the back view? I would always hit 6 a bunch of times, and then go like that to hit back view. That's not the proper way to do it. You can just do control 1, and it sends you to the back, control 3 to the left, control 7 to the bottom. So when you're working around 3D space, it's best to know all the different options that you can do here, because that's when you start really increasing um, productivity, I should say. You'll make your stuff a lot, a lot faster. The other thing I want to cover, this is a pretty advanced technique, um, is shape keys. And I'm not really going to go over much on shape keys, just the simple fact that if you were to give it a shape key, over here, vertex, group shape keys, you know. First, you always want the basis, you never want to touch that, and then you add another shape. Now what shape keys do, it allows you, I guess the best example I can think of is you have a skinny character, and then you can give this slider uh, the effect that makes the character get fatter and fatter, right? So you only have to create one model, and then you have a whole bunch of different types of people. So if I go in here now, and say, let's, well let's just grab the whole thing. Uh, let me make sure that clipping is applied. Okay, we'll size it up in this way a bit, and we'll size it up on the Z. I guess that's not the best example of shape. Yeah, I should also drag some parts out. So there we go, we'll do it like that. And now you notice when you tab out, you go, oh, did my effects not, or did it not have any effect? Well, it actually does. Because if you go back into the shape keys, you drag this value, it'll change to how you want it, right? So then let's say you want to add another key, tab in, let's make this, hmm, let's grab this part, which should also go to the back, and we'll size it up only in this direction. This is looking bizarre. So now I can pull my two key values, and you're starting to see this thing is just going crazy. I right, type the eyes, I can pull this in a bit, maybe not make it so extreme. So say when you're animating, you can have a shape key that handles the eyes just shooting out. Obviously I grabbed back the head cycle as well. But the reason why I want to show shape keys off, like the number one reason, is because once you've applied shape keys, you can't apply a mirror modifier. You just can't. There's no way around that. You have to delete your shape keys. Delete, delete, delete. Then go back here and hit apply. Now, it's been, the one side's been applied to the other, and you can actually add the shape keys. So you might not have to worry about that for a long time down the road if you're new to Blender, but if you ever do get there, try to remember what I just told you, because that is so annoying. I remember I made a model, I had all the shape keys applied to it, and then I realized, ah crap. I didn't apply my mirror modifier or my decimate modifier. Luckily you don't need to apply those for Unity, but for other game engines you might have to. So I wasn't that much out of luck, but I'm sure if I was using a different game engine, it could have really hurt me. Now I'm going to give you another piece of advice going back with how to make your scene look nice. When you render your scene, it might not look, uh, the shadows might not look that good, and that's simply because of the sampling. You want to increase the render to whatever your computer can handle. Um, my new computer here can probably handle 250. Depends on um, your computer, but that, that increases the bounce calls. So it'll increase the render time significantly, but it'll also make the end picture more detailed. So even though it says it's 1920 by 1080, you need your uh, samples to be crazy high to make it look crazy good, if that makes sense. And now, there's two more uh, pieces of advice I want to give. Number eight is really simple. Render everything off of your GPU, not your CPU. So right now it's on CPU, because that's the default. But if you actually go into your user preferences, and you go to system, you see here, compute device, change this to CUDA, and then mine's GT, or G4 is GTX 970. Once you change that, you want to go over here, and switch, device, to be GPU. Simple. Once you change that, you'll notice now, like if I render my scene, uh, here, I'll leave this actually for the time being, just on CPU. If I render this image, you, you can see all my, my eight cores, I guess, going, and it's going at this speed, right? It's chugging along, it's chugging along. It's doing this at a decent speed, right? We're at 2.4, all right. It's still taking a while, so let's escape out of that. If I switch this just to GPU, same amount, and I render this image. You'll get one block, but you'll see how fast it's moving. And you might think, oh, this is probably slower. You only have 
the single precision point as opposed to like the, the eight uh, cores, but this is actually faster. It's typically extremely, like way faster. You can look at benchmarks online, always do GPU if you have a good GPU. If you don't, then stick to CPU, but try for GPU. Now the last piece of advice is the best newbie tip I could ever give, the spacebar. You might think, oh, this is like cumbersome, there's so many things to click and I don't know what I'd want. The reason why I want to point the spacebar is if you can think of something, it'll typically be there. So say I want to have these uh, faces, triangles as opposed to squares, well, I can just type in triangulate and just hit enter, boom. And now they've all been, you know, triangulated. Another reason too is, say you're marking seams for uh, UV textures, right? You want to mark these seams and you don't want to go all the way down here and you don't actually know what button it is to mark seams. If you just type in mark, there you go. You notice they go red and it's good. But now it's even faster because now if you just hit the space bar, it remembers what you typed in last. So I can mark those seams. Let's mark these seams. So it actually speeds up development. So say you're just gonna be doing a lot of extruding. So if I take these four here, and I can do E to extrude, right? That Because I know that's what the command is. But let's say I want to extrude both of these as separate faces. What would I do? Well, if you go to W, you can see you can do inset faces, you can do, you can subdivide it. Whoops. If you do Alt E, sorry, I forgot what it was for a second there. Uh, you can do individual faces and you can extrude it, which what that did now is if I grab this, you'll see it's separate. Or you can do what I said and just type in extrude indiv individual faces and move. And then you just hit space again, do it again. You can grab these, do it again, grab these. So now all you have to do is hit the space bar and it's doing exactly what you want. So, not, well, yeah. Spacebar, best newbie tool I can ever get. So thank you so much for watching guys, this has just been a simple tutorial. I was asked by one of my subscribers just to quickly go over some of the basics and I figured this will be the first one. If you guys want to see more of like some basic advice and how to get better, let me know, I'll make a part two. Uh, leave a comment below on what you guys thought, and as always, I've been me, you've been you. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks everybody.